EGG, Elemental Gimmick Gear, was released on the Dreamcast in the year of our Lord, 1999. I love party. that Prince album. <laughs> oh, yeah. And a party like it's 1999. That's right. It completely defies all Dreamcast logic by being a beautifully hand-drawn 2D game, except for boss battles, yeah, that's which are up. 3D and are ugly as sin, but crisp. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. For the most... Most part. Kind of sort of a post 9-11 sad, looking sad, drab. drabby sort of yeah. affair. Not tray up. Tray down. Down. Tray down sort of sad. Let's start off with the story. The story of Elemental Gimmick Gear is that you are somewhat of a relic. You are discovered in this Elemental Gimmick Gear, which is like an egg-like mech, kind of? Yeah. It's like a scuba suit. It's scuba kind of like a Bioshock. Bioshock the, the before, yeah. before Bioshock. Bioshock before Bioshock, I guess you could say. Before Bioshock was cool. That's right. It's like a hipster Bioshock. <laughs> hipster Bioshock. Even more steampunk. That's right. You are discovered in this temple sort of thing called Fogna. Not much is known about it, other it's, than the fact that it... Foggy. It produces fog, and it's wrecking havoc on the landscape with these tentacles. Which is <laughs> so Japan. Very <laughs> Japan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, you're found and you're asleep for quite some time. In fact, a couple hundred years, a couple thousand years, something yeah. like that. And the world has kind of evolved around you. They they've seen your suit. They've What's analyzed it. it. They've reverse it, engineered reverse it. Reverse engineered it. And now everyone's walking around just like you were once walking around in your suit. And you wake up and you have to discover who you are and what is Fogna. So the gameplay is actually pretty fun. It's a little weird at the start and some of the punching is a little slow, but once you get into the swing of it, it's nice. The 2D <laughs> gameplay, swing of it. I, nice I'd say it's pretty solid. All the like <laughs> magic and cool stuff, the hook shot of yep. thing you can do. Mm -hmm. But uh, then you get into the 3D. Yes. It's a mess. That is that is a hot mess. Everything is so solid, but once you get into the 3D boss battles, it really changes things. Right, I mean, you get used to the whole game being this top-down 2D view, and the only time that there's the 3D is in the boss battle. So you don't get to perfect it. You mm -hmm. don't really in, get to know what it is. Mm -hmm. it, it also feels sloppy. There's this point in time where you, you face the first boss, and it's a centipede, and it's much quicker than you. It's running around you, and it, it's kind of sloppy 3D controls. You throw a punch, and you think you hit it, but you didn't hit it because yeah. it's faster than you, and you kind of have to turn and try to punch again, but it's already right, across the screen. It's hard to get screen. the angles proper when you're trying to punch. It's you're very slow. Odd. It's, it's clunky. It's like a pseudo 3D fighter. Which, I mean, yeah. the, the only other game I've ever played where, like, a boss battle has switched in such a way was uh, Metal Gear Solid 4. And at the very end, you're like, all right, how am I going to use my sneaking abilities to wait? It's a fighter game now. Yeah. But it was actually pretty good. This, the transition is pretty rough. Omicron did that, too. Oh, that's right. Omicron yeah. did do some of that. for our Omicron video. Yeah. What, what? David Richie played Bowie. David Bowie. Richie, get in here. David Bowie suit. He's here right David now. Bowie, David, David Bowie. Bowie. David Bowie. Oh. Richie's here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but that said, there are some boss battles towards the end of the game that are 3D that are very rewarding. Also, there's the spinning mechanic. Oh yeah, the spinning mechanic. It's a little it's slow. Weird. Yeah. Well, it's, it's slow at first. Right. Once you get going, it zips around, but it takes so long just to get it started. Yes. It, and like you mentioned, it's kind of like you have to... It's skill-based. They want yep. you to use the skill. They want you to go in the corner, start your spin, and then you can wreak mm -hmm. havoc. But you get hit once, it goes away. Yes. So I really liked that ability, but as you said, mm -hmm. the game is forcing you to strategize your attacks. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit more than most people would like, mm -hmm. I think, but you're slow enough, you're clunky enough, it takes long enough to start your spin that you really have to think about what you're doing before you do it, otherwise you're dead. So the puzzles in this game, because it is a very Zelda-esque game, I actually really enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. they're, they're pretty I neat. Them too. And it has a very Zelda-esque uh, sort of scenarios because you get a new item and you can do different puzzles. You can go yeah, back right. to certain areas and rediscover certain right, things. Right, you're constantly yeah. going to that same level, but you're 
realizing new things and new things are popping up. Yes. The whole game is just a puzzle that builds on top of itself. Yeah. It yeah. kind of reminds me of Skyward Sword before Skyward Sword. In Skyward Sword, the whole idea, they were trying to revamp the Zelda formula a little bit at that point in time, uh, for better or for worse. And basically, till the death whole... Do us till part. death do us part. And basically, the idea was is that before you got to the temple, you had to play a temple. As in, the area, the land, was a puzzle to get yeah. to the temple. So it's like, no matter what you did, you had to constantly be solving things. And this right. game is very similar yeah. in that regard. Yeah. Right, it doesn't, what sucks is it doesn't really hold your hand. You don't know what you have to do to get to a certain area. There are definitely... It's not really intuitive. You're like, oh, I can't do that. I know there's something that I need to do. But I have no idea I don't know where I'm supposed to go. In terms of the presentation, those graphics with the VGA out the, look oh God, yeah. pristine. I couldn't Oof. capture them with VGA, unfortunately. I was playing with VGA. I ended up capturing with S video. So it's a little bit better than your regular, you know, red, yellow, white, but my God. Composite. Composite. Yeah. Uh, but if you get the opportunity to play with the VGA outs, it's do it. It's really nice. What's more powerful, the Dreamcast with the VGA out or the PlayStation 4? Well. Does PlayStation 4 have Crazy Taxi? No. Well, I, I think we know how that one goes then. Do it And now. in that 2D, it's like an explosion of very, very vivid color. In, in your face. There's it's it's like watching a... a like, it's Bukkake of color. A yes. Nickelodeon game show, like, bright. Yes. It's crazy. And there's also a lot going on with contrast with dark and light. Like, you go in these dark dungeons and there's, like, these lights fixtures on the walls and things glowing going on, orbs. glowing orbs. Yeah. 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 Very cool looking. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Very cool looking. It's almost so pretty that you think you have to interact with it, but it's just a background. It's just part yes. of the display. Exactly. Yeah. It takes a little bit to get used to like, all right, this slightly pops out. Yeah. Right. This this is what I actually have to go right. to. Right. It was a little confusing with that because you're like, yeah. oh, this big glowing green orb is so beautiful. What does it do? No, it's just the background. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's also why it's so sad when it goes to 3D. Because that 2D was just so yeah. pristine. It was yeah. just absolutely beautiful. and then it's just horrible. It's kind of monochromatic. It's not that great. I, I think the, the comment you guys made about how the size it had on the disc, I think you might be onto something with maybe it was originally intended for the Saturn. So, like, if you look at it, there's, there's only that little bit that it's written to. Bit. If it was released in the 32-bit era, and I think it could have been a 32-bit game, especially for the Saturn, mm -hmm. yeah. which was a three or 2D powerhouse, it would have been amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was odd for the Dreamcast. This would have just, like, fucking blown kids' minds. Yep. It would be, it'd, like, brains exploded everywhere from seeing the <laughs> just the colors and the crispness. <laughs> What did you think about the sound and the music, though? What about the sound of music? Uh, the I, hills are alive. Anyway. I thought the the sound was pretty good. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds great. All the sounds are serviceable. I, they, float, I, they flow together. They they, they work. Um, das right. music. So I I feel uh, the music for this game. It's uh. It sort of works, but it does, it, it's just sort of generic. You could really swap it with a lot of yeah. different games and you wouldn't really notice very much. Yep. There wasn't anything like that really fit the mood. That's, yes. that's sort of the problem. It, it could have used like, a, I don't know, a sort of something slightly a little bit more electronic for parts of it and mm -hmm. then like because there's so much of like nature and machine going back and forth. Yep. You, you'd think they could have worked something in there, but instead they were just like, all right, just get like soap opera background. Yep. But it's it's serviceable, but nothing yeah. beyond that yeah. for the most part. So how about that translation, Tony? That's a little bit of an issue as well. Whereas I generally like the story, the translation is subpar. It looked they were enjoying sucking lives. And I mean like below Secret of Mana subpar. It looked they were enjoying sucking lives. Who was the guy who did Secret of Mana, Richie, in Chrono Trigger back in the day who translated them? Tom... Tom Woolsey. Woolsey? Woolsey? Girl, you looking like good. Tom w Wilsey act. <laughs> yeah, I was just dancing over there. Having a good time? If you get his name wrong, it's no worse than his mistranslation. Exactly. Oh! Oh! <laughs> we will call him Tom Woozy. 
Uh, I'd probably rate the game a solid 8. It was fun, it was enjoyable. I liked how you could uh, progress easily enough, but they didn't really hold your hand mm -hmm. too much. Yeah. It was it was fun, and it was pretty. I liked it. Yeah. I might give it a 7 or an 8, uh, based on... I haven't played very much of it. This seems like if I would have rented it back in the day, played it for a bit, I probably would have liked it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Playing more of it, I might go up to a 9. I don't know. I'm going to have to play a bit more in the future. I played this game all the way through. Uh, I can say that I would probably also give it a solid eight. It is not, it doesn't do Zelda as well as Zelda does Zelda. Mm -hmm. uh, that's tough to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it is a solid action adventure RPG. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful, sounds okay, had some odd nuances due to marketing with the 3D where they had to be yeah. like, hey, we gotta have some 3D somewhere. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's a worthwhile game. It goes for around, last time I checked, 30 some dollars on eBay. So it's not it's cheap, not too bad. No. But it's not expensive. It's worth your money uh, and worth getting a VGA cable just for this game if you have the opportunity to do so. Does it do Zelda as well as Link does Zelda? Oh. Well, we haven't seen that on screen <laughs> yet. <laughs> Nintendo, everybody likes an edgy remake. Does it do Zelda as well as Impa does Zelda? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Ooh. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more H4G game reviews, don't forget to subscribe to see new episodes every week. And for those interested, we have just started a brand new Patreon page. Definitely check it out. We're working on some great perks and rewards for you guys. Links are in the description below.